In 2020, there were over 54 million young people in the southern and eastern Mediterranean region. By 2030, they will reach 62 million. Of these 54 million, between 25 and 40% are unemployed, depending on the country. This means millions of unemployed young people across the region, a massive potential. Many try to find a job, but most of the jobs available on the market don't match their qualifications. What's even more striking is how many of these young people are discouraged from even trying. Up to 38% are not in employment, education or training. A massive potential, unused. Untapping this potential is vital to allow young people to contribute to the prosperity of their communities as citizens, as human beings and create a positive future for all. In 2020, the ETF ran a study across the entire region to understand how young people fit into the labour market. Here is what we have found. On the bright side, for example, in Egypt, in spite of these challenges, young people do not regret the educational path they chose. In fact, education proves to be a success factor. If you are a person with tertiary education in Egypt, you have 13 times higher chances to find a job compared to a person with general secondary education. Vocational education and training is another possible pathway. If you're from Jordan and have vocational education, you have three and a half times higher probability of being employed than those with no education. In Egypt, you have six times higher chances than those with secondary general. Digital is also another key area. In Jordan, two-thirds of the young people we interview believe that digital technologies will change their job. And nine out of ten believe that this change will be positive. Nevertheless, this positive outlook is not always reflected in the labor market. Our research identifies three main reasons why many young people do not actively contribute to their societies. Every year, more young people enter the labor market than there are jobs available. Although few of the young people we interviewed are eager to move abroad, many are forced to migrate. What is more, the jobs that are available at home are generally low quality and high risk. Most are in the informal economy, where there are no contracts, no social security, no training or development opportunities. Many young people end up in jobs for which they are overqualified. Their human capital is devalued. Those who can afford it wait for better jobs rather than picking any job available, in particular if they have gone to university. Over the last decade, the number of young men in Egypt who are not even looking for work went from almost zero to one in four needs today. Women in the region have greatly improved their level of education over the years. But the same improvement cannot be seen in the labor market. Many hold a university degree, but their education is often just a tick on a checklist. Overall, women are still three times less likely than men to be active in the labor market, and those who are, are twice as likely to be unemployed. Young women are the most vulnerable group. All this paints a complex picture. Youth are high on the policy agenda of all countries in the region, and so is their transition from school to work. And we shouldn't forget how much progress has been made in the past decade. Here are just a few examples. In Lebanon, the ministries of agriculture and TVET established a school industry partnership to upgrade technical agricultural education. Algeria created an M public employment agency that has gone from zero to 5,000 civil servants in only 10 years. Egypt has set up a network of regional labor market observatories. 7,000 jobs were created for women between 2010 and 2019 with the establishment of 22 satellite garment factories across rural areas in Jordan. Work-based learning systems have been consolidated with dual learning programs in Egypt and in Morocco. There are examples of good practice in the region that can guide new actions and can be replicated while addressing current limitations. Mm. 
more work is still needed for the young people of this region to be able to experience things like interviewing for jobs, new opportunities, trying out possible careers or starting up their own business. Young people everywhere have the right to experience this in their formative years. They have the right to find out who they are, take their place in society and be happy. They have the right to a more prosperous society. And this is even more true now, in the aftermath of COVID-19. So what would it take for the youth in the region to break the cycle of poverty? The key to economic prosperity in the region is stepping into the unused potential of the millions of young men and women who are not in employment education or training. Youth groups that are currently the most vulnerable can become the solution. We need to design specific policy measures to target each group. COVID-19 is already redesigning our future, whether we like it or not. So it's in our best interest to turn this crisis into an opportunity. We need measures that support social protection, education and skills development. In particular, skills for digital and green economies. So, let's say we're able to keep our young people with all the skills they need. Then what? What are we going to do with all these well-trained youth? This is where job creation comes in. We need to create enough demand for these young people in the labor market. Last but not least, we must take the advantage of the opportunities generated by the new forms of employment. For instance, platform work could generate new jobs and even reduce disparities between young men and women. There are 54 million young people in the region who want to reach their full potential as contributors to the prosperity of their communities, as citizens, as human beings. Can you imagine the transformation the region could benefit from if these 54 million were trained and integrated into decent and satisfactory work within their local labour markets? In this transition, skills will play a vital role to keep young people in their current jobs or to help them get new ones. We believe skills are the best answer to the new needs of work in the 21st century can help young people find their place as active citizens and break the poverty cycle. It's up to all of us. Let's make it happen.